you realize what's going on here? I have to make an a, amendment to my top 10 PC Engine shooters of all time. This might it, I might have to throw this one in the top 5. How scary is that? Who do you remove from the top 5? I get chills just thinking about it. Guys, are you ready to go on a ride here? We're talking about... Nexer. Oh my god. Did I get hell? No. I knew I was going to pay for this one. I got hell because this wasn't on my top 10 list. And I go out there and I check out the forums because I love seeing people's top 10 lists and I love seeing how cockamamie they are. But I'm going to tell you right now. Oh. I don't know. What is it? What? I got to compete against this now. All right. The winds of Thor are blowing cold, 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 cold. There we go. What are you talking about here? You ready to make an amendment to the Bithead 1000 top 10 PC Engine shooters of all time list? Okay, you ready to make an amendment of the top, maybe to the top five? Who do you kick out? Listen, you think they're making hard decisions in Congress or in the emergency room? Uh-uh. They're happening right here. I don't know what we're going to do with this shooter here. Okay, guys, we're talking about a shooter that is basically... If Soldier Blade and Image Fight got into a car crash... Oh, that's a good one, buddy. <laughs> Sip of coffee for that one. This is why you come to the show. This is why you come to the show. <sighs> Sip of coffee for that one. Guys, this is a shooter like no other shooter you've ever played before. I'm here. You know what? I think about modern day shooters. And I think about how they rode on the backs of kings. And they got and they have no excuse. They really have no excuse. I mean, this is trailblazing, people. This is trailblazing, and we're talking about Nexer. Okay? And I'm not gonna say Nexar. Oh my good lord, where do you start? Where do you where do you start? I'm gonna start by saying the first time that I played Nexer, uh, I was. Hmm. Where where do you even start? That's a good question. That's a good question. Uh, I'm gonna say you gotta understand something when you talk about games like Gate of Thunder. When you talk about games, like, yeah, Soldier Blade. We're talking about Nasac, Nasac Soft, okay? Published by Nasac. You ready for this? Developed by Canico. All right, the same guys that brought you yeah, Airbuster. Oh yeah, and Canico, the same guys that brought you Superstar Soldier. Star Parodia. All right, so we're talking about guys that, that know what they're doing. Let's face it. And to be honest with you, the first time that I played Nexer, the difficulty scared me away. Oh, my God. There is this scumbag, mid-boss on level two, who comes down. He's like this flying saucer. And he comes down, and it's funny because... He traps you with these two arms, so you're basically stuck on the bottom of the screen. And then two cannons, cannons 
travel up and down the arms firing bullets at you and you're in this very very narrow uh, play field and there's like no escape and these cannons are relentless and I just remember getting stuck on this part and saying to myself fuck this Listen, guys, Nexer is not a walk in the park. I'm going to tell you right now. Here, here you go. You ready for this? If you get past stage three, automatically you should be able to uh, be an airline pilot. That should be that should be your test. <sighs> Listen up, Delta. You want to fly an airline pilot? You just go to Delta and you you, you show you go you plug in Nexar and you beat stage three and then you say, "Give me my fucking flight suit. Give me my captain's hat." That's a great listen. I got news for you right now. The hand-eye coordination involved for beating Nexar is absolutely phenomenal. My brain hurt by the end of this game. My brain and the stress levels were through the roof. That's all. If you can beat Rax Amber 2, you can fly a jet fighter on, onto an aircraft carrier, as far as I'm concerned. And, and fuck, if you can beat uh, Image Fight, which I think was programmed by Hannibal Lecter himself, you can fly the fucking Challenger to the moon. Put that one in your fucking pipe. Yeah, but I'm telling you right now. Here we go. We're going to start. We're going to start with, let's, number one, let's start with that box art. I mean, in all its glory, you got, you, there's your ship right here. You're blasting your laser. You can't tell whether you're blasting your laser or the robot, this huge mech, is blasting its laser at you. It's a Mexican standoff. This wonderful box art. What I want to tell you is that there is a theme that runs throughout this game that ties everything together. Oh, yeah. From the music, to the art style, to the gameplay, to the cutscene. The opening cutscene is... I've seen every PC Engine cutscene that's imaginable to human man. And I'm going to tell you right now, this was by far the most dramatic and the most artistic and the most simplistic. Oh yeah, the basic idea of the opening scene is, and it's in Japanese, but to be honest with you, it's done so beautifully, you don't need to know a lick of Japanese to understand the story. How fantastic. It crosses language barriers, this cutscene. It's basically, you're in your ship, your sidekick is in her ship. You could tell there's a love interest involved here. She winds up going in for uh, going in for an enemy attack, and this big mecha, which happens to be the final boss of the game, comes out and blows her to smithereens. But you don't even see her getting destroyed. They just cut to the scene where she's floating through the air. So you you get the idea that she got blown to smithereens. But she's floating through the air in the most beautiful... Let me tell you something right now. When it comes to cutscenes on the PC Engine, the animation is very limited. So I'm always amazed to see what they do with what they had for the time. I love it. I love it. And to see mouths moving and eyeballs rolling or with these big sprites, 
you know, we're talking about big hand-drawn sprites. This movement requires power. And it requires effort on the part of the animators. Oh, yeah. To pull it off smoothly. So basically, this broad gets blown off the face of the earth. And now it's, it's go time. revenge time and we're gonna start you on stage one where it opens up on the most epic galactic battle you've ever seen we're in space now this isn't any fool around this is not some mythological shooter all right you're in a spaceship and you'll be fighting mechs in space and machines in space this is a highly technical engineered spaceship shooter there's no fooling around here there's no goof off power-ups there's no there's nothing goofy about this game this is serious it's dead serious i love it it's like rax amber too all right this is meat and potatoes space baby we're in outer space Sip a coffee for outer space. There are high stakes involved here. You hop into your ship, stage one, as I said, enormous galactic battle going on, lasers firing in the background. You get the idea that there's something enormous going on in space. <laughs> And you're part of it. And you're a very small part of it. It makes you feel small and insignificant. The music is so beyond epic. I don't I don't even know how to describe it. It's bigger. It's that big Japanese sound. I don't know how they do it. It makes you feel like this is the future. It's the future of the composition of music. And the music throughout the game is tied together. There are hints in the music from the beginning of the cutscenes to the very end of the game that link everything together. Do you understand how powerful that is?
The game is frustrating as hell. It'll eat your lunch. But for some reason, when you start over again, you hear that music kick on. And there's this sense of you're involved in, uh, on a, in a very powerful mission. You say to yourself, these fuckers took the time to compose this music? I'm in! You have these effects. We're still on the first stage. You have these effects where these enormous battle cruisers just materialize onto the screen. It's like they come out of warp drive. And they're firing huge lasers at you. I mean, the level design in this game is is absolutely gorgeous. It is... In the beginning of the game, you get to pick your, your level of difficulty. I, it's normal, it's hard, and then it says something in Japanese that means so cruel. And I got news for you. I don't think... I'm on normal! I didn't think it could get any crueler! And I'm certainly not going to play it in hard mode. Oh my... You get to stage, let me tell you something, stage two, you're passing by this enormous planet, planets in the background. It's so beautiful as you pass, you do a drive-by of this huge planet. The bosses are huge. Huge mech-type bosses, interesting uh, battle patterns. Your weapons are... Your main battleship, your main battle cannon, you can upgrade basically twice. It's a single... Listen, it's what... The simplicity of Nexer and the complexity of Nexer is absolutely incredible. One button to fire. No super bombs, no speed adjustment, and the controls are on the money! It can't get any better. It's exactly where it should be. I, I say that about Soldier Blade. The controls are perfect. The controls here are perfect. And you have one button to be concerned about. A fire button. That's it. Power-ups range from like homing flame laser. It's, per it's my favorite power-up in the game. You get these two options that go around and, and like, homing options, we'll call them. That doggedly attack enemies on the screen at hyper speed. They can be a little confusing. They can confuse you a little bit because they fly around like crazy. And then when there's no enemies on the screen, they actually come back and attach to the ship. And then, it, which is kind of annoying because when an enemy appears, there's a slight delay before they fire off and attack again. You have a side. You have a crawling missile that shoots out to the side that's very powerful. Uh, lasers that shoot off to the side. The sound in this game, okay? The sound is perfect. Explosions are perfect. Weapon sounds are perfect. Music sound, effects, mix is perfect. So much thought went into this game. And the design of this game. That's why I talk about the way the game is engineered, almost like Image Fight was engineered. A lot of thought went into it. You could tell that a lot of people played the game before it was... I, I don't know, what do they do, a beta test? But they sat down with the pros. You get it? You get the idea that this game was developed by... People that aren't knuckleheads! It's what I'm trying to say. People that understood shooters put this game together. Do you get it? And there's a pedigree there. Superstar Soldier, Air Buster, Star Parodia. Superstar Soldier, uh, Star Parodia, and Nexer 
I mean, you're talking about games that you find on many people's top 10 PC Engine shooters of all time list. So, I mean, we're talking enormous amount of pedigree here. <sighs> Stage 3 mid-boss. Absolutely uh, epic mid-boss. <laughs> Okay, uh, interesting attack pattern and an interesting way you have to evade it that I've never experienced before. And when I did figure it out, it was it was really a thrill. Because I mean, let's face it, it takes a lot to get to that mid boss, and then when you get when you get iced by him a couple times, the frustration levels go through the roof. But then when you finally figure him out, it's like, you know, I read your book, Rommel. I read your book. It's like you figure him out, and then you're mine now, sucker. And then you realize that it's not that difficult. That's the story with Nexer. You play it, you play it, sure, you memorize, you memorize. Things come off a lot more difficult at first. And then you start to learn. And as long as you're willing to put the time in to learn, you figure it out. And then when you figure it out, then you play again, it's like stage one, okay, yeah, it's a breeze. Especially after you pass stage three. Stage two, oh my god, it, it'll tear you to schmitherines. But then once you figure it out, it's almost fun. It becomes fun. And then when you figure out stage three, and you have stage three in the palm of your hand, you feel like you're unstoppable. You're like, bring it on. And then stage four, mmm. Stage five... Stage 5 is right out of, out of Image Fight. Oh yeah, check it out. It'll blow your mind. You say, you say, it's amazing how these games are intertwined. How there must be this huge level of respect for, uh, between programmers of the time. Where they would probably, you know, take from this and take from that. How about that? Hey, let's take a little Image Fight for this level, you know? In a classy way. Stage 6, I mean, you, you want to talk about the way this game starts to end is stage 6. What I did was, I didn't read, when I play, when I, when I play uh, one of these amazing shooters, I don't do any research on it beforehand. What I like to do is I like to knuckle down and try to beat the game. And this one took me, I want to say, 5 Five days, okay. Hours wise, I put some time into this this puppy right here, okay. And I oh, oh I got another thing for you too. You beat stage three in this, and it's like you, they should punch your card. You should have like a shooter card, and you get a punch. Stage three, nexer, click click. Yeah, that's where I'm at. You want to talk to people about shooters that they play. You want to know where they're at. Let me see your card. Stage three, click, click. Oh yeah. And I'm gonna tell you right now, stage four, stage five, stage six is is hard, but the ending of stage six where you come up to this almost like brain. I thought it was at the end of the game. I really thought it was the final boss. And uh, it winds up being like this orb that comes up in a... It, it, you're in this like tunnel. It almost feels like you're in the reactor of like the Death Star or something. It feels very important. And this sphere comes up and you're like, oh, this is the guy. This is the guy causing all the fucking trouble. This is like the mother brain that controls uh, uh, Moda. And he comes out, and it's like he puts off these lightning strikes. And there's like these uh, force field uh, pressure waves that come at you. 
Oh, the lightning strikes are great because they just, like, appear. Like lightning should be. It's not like the, the lightning travels out at you. It's like, no, speed of light. <laughs> lightning. Wow. And then he does... He does a spread... A bullet spread... That's not an XY axis. It's almost like on a Z axis. So if this is the sphere, it comes out, the bullet spread comes out like this. It's beautiful. You say to yourself, a lot of thought went into that. Yeah. This was, we didn't mail this one in. A lot of thought went into this. And then, of course, you get up to the seventh level. Okay? Which is ultimately just. And what a refreshing thing, because basically, this game is brutalizing you the whole time. And then when you finally power out, and, and when, I felt, when I saw there was another stage, I was almost like, oh my god. Here we go. And it's set up like this. You have five credits. Okay, so you have five credits to get as far as you can in the level. And then you have unlimited continues. Okay, almost like Image Fight. Perfect. Perfect. So in other words, you get five chances to clear a level, and then you can start on basically... And for every five guys you have, they put you back at a checkpoint. Okay? And the checkpoints usually happen right after you do something very difficult. <laughs> Which is nice. The checkpoints don't set you back... Uh, let's be, if you're playing the game and you're like, oh, 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 I got past that fucking barrage, you usually can stick in your mind, we, we made it to a checkpoint. And you basically did. And I think there's like three or four, three checkpoints throughout a stage. Okay, but ultimately, if you burn through your five guys, you start the level over. Okay? So in that regard, <laughs> I don't want to say the game is forgiving, but... They give you the opportunity to try, try, try again. Nice. Okay. Knowing that, stage seven is just the final boss. Which I thought was very, very exciting and a bit of a change. You get to the final boss. He happens to be a smaller mech compared to the other mechs. I got up to him. I'm like, who's this guy? And then he starts, like, twirling his laser, and he's fucking firing this laser at you. And then he goes into these different attack patterns, and all of them are very brilliant. He sends off a bunch of drones at you. He's doing this spinning laser attack. I mean, this guy's mobile. He's agile. And it's a really, really fun last boss battle, a very challenging last boss battle. And, uh... Oh, by the way, at the end of stage six, they'd send you back to another cutscene, which makes you believe that you beat the game. I mean, am I giving out spoilers here? Oops. No. But what I want to say is the music in level two, I mean, the music on level uh, six... I'm going to tell you right now, if Gator Thunder is a fucking 22-ounce Budweiser in the can, mmm, delicious. 
okay? We have, we have a bottle of fine wine right here. Do you understand? Okay. There's a level of sophistication about Nexer that can't be understated. Guys, we are. This is high-end stuff here. All right. This isn't. This isn't. If if Gate of Thunder and Lords of Thunder are the jock at school, you know, this is the poet. It's a very. I'm telling you, man. Nexer. Very excited to play it. Very excited to beat it. Yes. Punch my card. Yes. Hot stuff. You're going to pay, eight, like, I, it's going for like 180 bucks now. All right. So, I mean, that's what you, you, you The easiest, I, I don't think there's an easy way to get Nexer. And that's very sad. Because I believe, I don't think anybody has it on their networks or anything like that. As far as I know. So the cheapest way to probably play this game is you'd have to have the, a PC Engine CD-ROM or uh, an American TurboGrafx CD-ROM. Super CD. Super CD. Interesting. Oh, they, it is advertised up here. Uh, so you'd have to have the upgrade RAM chip. Uh, what, what, what am I talking about here? Yeah, so it, you'd have to have the CD-ROM with the uh, Super CD capabilities, and you'd have to basically buy a reproduction if you want this on the cheap. That would be probably your cheapest formula for playing this game. Maybe somebody knows something that I don't know about. I'm sure everybody does! And I'll get called out on it, but whatever. Here we go. Next are guys, you just tuned in to the greatest video game program in the history of human civilization. And you better believe that. With a 4K face! I'll see you next time. Guys, I really want to mention that, uh... I want to say I was going to say thank you in comments, but I just thought it would be annoying after a while. But I want to say thank you for all the support we got through Patreon, and uh, boy, oh boy, man, you guys! <laughs> I tell you what, it's something else, man. It's something else. And I got news for you: I'm going to work harder than ever, and uh, we're going to have a great year. You and I together. Do you realize what we're going to accomplish here? Talk about, you want to talk about shooters? We're on such a fantastic journey when it comes to shooters. We're going to learn uh, together. And we're going to be formidable experts on, on shooters and, and all games alike. But man, we are going to really do something special this year. I can feel it. I can feel it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for all your support.